me that you don't have time. Social media is called social media for a reason. How are you gonna force me to engage with someone's content? I don't even know you, girl! I see someone with 10 comments on their video. And they didn't respond to my man one! Hey, two fam, it's your girl Gladys, aka Is That Your Hair, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. Make sure you tap that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you've been rock with me for a minute, what's up, what's good, and welcome back. Now, if you missed the last few Small Talk Saturday videos, I highly recommend you check them out. In my first two, I gave some no-nonsense tips on how to start a YouTube channel, part one and part two. Definitely check that out after this video because there's a slew of information in there, and no matter what stage of the game you're at, I'm sure you'll take away some good tips from that video. I also shared some of my 10 huge mistakes I've made as a small YouTuber. Make sure you check that out as well. All videos will be linked in the description box down below. Also, last week I discussed a brand new feature on YouTube that is going to change the game when it comes to audience retention. Check that out as well at the end of this video. Huge shout out to everyone that's been giving me awesome feedback on these videos. I see you guys, I see your comments, and it's really letting me know that I'm doing something right, so thank you. All right, so we're just gonna, you know, get myself set up here. I'm gonna plug you guys in, and we're gonna get started. Am I center? Okay, hair looks good. Tilt you guys up a little bit. All right, we are here. So one tip I mentioned in my How to Start a YouTube channel video was about engagement on social media and how important it is. I thought about saving this video for another time, but then I got this DM recently and I was like, nah Gladys, you gotta do this video right now, this week. You have to do this video now. I'm actually super excited to record this video because I'm about to drop some gems that I am certain is going to change the way you view engagement on social media. In some way, shape, or form, I think I'm about to change a few lives here when it comes to how you engage on these social media platforms. I'm going to start this video with how I thought to even create this video, some engagement practices I've observed during my time as a YouTuber, and then I will share my personal method that I use to guarantee high quality engagement. Plus y'all, I'm using my real life examples, so I suggest Go grab a pen and paper, because trust me, you're gonna wanna watch to the end. Whether you have 10 subscribers, 10,000 subscribers, 100,000 subscribers, you're gonna need every last drop of information from this video. So let's get into it. All right, y'all, so here's what had me ready to make this video right now. So I received a DM the other day from someone asking if I wanted to be in an engagement group. like engagement groups straight up I'm gonna share a little bit of my experience so the first time I heard about an engagement group was about a year ago April 2019 and someone I follow on YouTube hit me up and basically asked me if I wanted to join their like group chat it was on a separate app outside of Instagram and she just wants to know if I wanted to join and just chat with other girls who were you know into like hair and makeup I guess so I was like, oh yeah, sure, that's cool, all right? So I get into the group chat and it started off fine. People were just introducing themselves, saying what their channel was about, dropping some of their video links. And I was like, okay, this is nice. It seems pretty communal. And then things got a little weird. So I noticed over a span of like a week, people were dropping their video links and I wasn't commenting yet. I was just kind of seeing how it was gonna go. Maybe I had an inkling something was off, I don't know. But then I noticed the moderators of the group saying things like, all right, make sure you like everyone's video. Okay, make sure you watch everyone's video. It went from that like friendly reminder to if you're not watching people's videos, you're gonna be kicked out the group. <laughs> I was like, what? What is this? How are you gonna force me to engage with someone's content? I don't even know these girls. I probably stuck around in the group for maybe at most a week and I wasn't posting and I wasn't even engaging. I just like was 
reading what people were saying and I was just formulating my own opinion and I was like, uh-uh, this, is, this isn't for me. The overall vibe I got from that group and what I think of quote-unquote engagement groups in general is that it's very transactional. It's more like you scratch my back, I scratch yours or else. You know what I mean? I don't like engagement groups because it's a derivative of sub for subculture. Anyone who's on YouTube, whether you're a viewer or a content creator, you know what sub for sub is. It basically means that if I subscribe to your channel, you subscribe to mine and you have to stay subscribed. Now you may gain subscribers this way and you may gain a lot of subscribers this way, but overall it's a very meaningless way to gain a following. Like, I can't stress that enough. It is totally inauthentic and it will do nothing for your channel long term. On top of that, sub for sub is against YouTube guidelines, y'all. Look at these screenshots here. I can't make this up. This is straight from the YouTube support page. So just do me a favor, just don't do it. Sub for sub, these fake ass engagement groups, don't do it, okay? So when I got that DM from that person asking me in July of 2020 if I want to be in an engagement group, I just totally went off. I didn't go off on them in a mean way, but I just let them know exactly how I felt about them. With my first experience, I didn't stick around to even participate for real for on the group, but based on the comments that I saw and the way people were acting in that short amount of time, I knew that that wasn't for me. And I knew that like four months into being on YouTube, like that's when I learned what an engagement group was. And it's funny because after that experience, I started seeing the term subs for sub and engagement group pop up in a lot of different places. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> Most of y'all already know me. I'm here to keep it real and true with you all. I'm not here to sugarcoat anything. This is based on what I've observed, my experiences, and my overall assessment is engagement groups, sub for sub and the like are BS. Comment down below if you've participated or witnessed any of this in your own experiences. I would love to chat about it with you. So now you may be thinking, okay Gladys, no suffer sub, no engagement groups, we got it. What, what should I do? How do I increase my engagement on YouTube, on Instagram, or on Facebook? Like, what should I do? What you need to do is react. And you're probably like, react? React to what? Like, what do you mean by that? Let me explain. React is actually an acronym that I created to help you evaluate how effective your level of engagement is on your social media platforms. React stands for five adjectives. Responsive, emotive, all-encompassing, creative, timely. The main idea is this, y'all. If your engagement includes these five attributes, you will yield high-quality engagement, period. This is something I made up, y'all. Literally, as I was sitting down, scripting and outlining how I wanted this video to go, I was thinking like, Dad, I really want this to stick to people. How can I make this stick? And just like how when we were in, you know, grade school, we learned acronyms to help us remember different things. So I was like, let me make one up. React, write it down. So if you're ready to hear how being reactive will help increase your engagement on your platforms, keep on watching. All right, so the first letter in the REACT acronym is R. R stands for responsive. Let me tell y'all something. Social media is called social media for a reason. You have to be social. That is the purpose of being on these platforms. So can someone please explain to me why people think it's cool to not respond to people in their Instagram comments, in their YouTube comments, Facebook comments? Why do people think that's cool? I don't get it. When did non-responsiveness become okay? Is it okay because you see celebrities doing it? Celebrities who might not even be running their own accounts? You see what I'm saying? It just really bothers me. I see someone with 10 comments on their video and they didn't respond to not man one. You are doing yourself a major disservice. But you know what I think it is, for real, for real? I think that people have come to equate elusiveness to some type of noteworthiness. They think that being difficult to reach or being hard to attain is somehow attractive. Like, they really feel that way. This is what I've observed. But from my personal experience, 
it's completely the opposite. Being approachable encourages more engagement. Being relatable definitely garners more engagement. I see it all the time with some of my favorite YouTubers. Erin On Demand and Katherine Manning, for example, the way they talk to their audience, you know, you feel like you're talking with a friend or like a big sister or just someone that you're really cool with who has a lot of knowledge about something you're interested in. You see what I'm saying? And they are responsive. They may not respond to every comment because at this point they have a lot going on in several of the businesses, but they still try to make it a point to do so. So if you're sitting here right now thinking to yourself, um, I'm not going to respond to that. Maybe I'll do it later. Well, I only have five comments. It doesn't matter. Oh my God, I have 200 comments. I can't respond to all these right now. I'll just respond to like two. Stop it. You're making excuses. Stop right now. You are hurting your channel, okay? You need to make the time to respond to people who actually take the time to comment. You need to make the time. If someone is actually willing to watch your video, whether it be a part of your video or your entire video, and actually scroll down to the comment section and type something to you, you need to respond, period. Let's move on to the letter E. The letter E in the REACT acronym stands for emotive. Does your engagement encourage, influence, foster emotion in others? I want you to think about that for a second. Does it make people feel something? Does it encourage people to respond to you in an emotional way? Think about what you say to people when you respond back to them. I do this sometimes. When someone says something nice to me, I'll say, thank you so much or thank you exclamation point. But I wanna challenge you to go further than that and actually tap into your emotions when people comment to you. This is something that I practice all the time. Instead of just saying, thank you, why don't you try saying something like, I love seeing you in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you get a comment that really touches you, tell them, tell your audience how you feel. Instead of saying thank you with a smiley face, you can say something like, wow, you just made my day. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. You see what I mean? Do you see how what I'm saying would invoke some emotion in someone? Imagine yourself as the viewer. If someone said that to you, like, wow, you made my day. I know when people tell me that, I'm like, oh, a bit there, what? <laughs> okay, no problem. You know, I feel, I actually feel good about myself. And subconsciously, I'm sure part of me feels more connected to that person. And that's what you want your engagement to do. You want your engagement to start to build connections with people. When someone messages you telling you that you encourage them to do something, you inspire them to take a next step in their business. They found extreme value in a recent post that you created. You should respond in a way that encourages more conversation. This is the engagement that I'm talking about. Engagement is just not I talk to you, you respond, you talk to me, you respond, and that's it. Since we're diving deeper into it, it should be more of a back and forth. I'm not saying it has to be like this every time, but I'm really challenging you all to try to make this a habit more than an option. So for example, with me, with my How To Start YouTube channel part one video, I received so much praise in that video. Thank you all so much. A lot of you said I did a great job, and I also feel like I did a great job. People who commented on, the, on that video, my main response to them was, which tip was the most helpful? Just by asking that one question, a lot of people would respond back to me eagerly explaining which tip you know resonated with them the most. And then sometimes I would follow up and say, okay, so what are you gonna do differently? How are you gonna change your strategy? Something like that to kind of keep the conversation going. This all falls into high quality engagement. Having these type of back and forth conversations, having this type of discourse, this is high quality. I'm a teacher, right? So they measure us based on how we interact with our students. And one huge proponent is our conversations with students and how frequently we speak with them and the level of engagement we have with them. And the more that we speak with them and the more we're able to have a back and forth with them, the higher we are rated for quality. So I think the same goes when you are talking with people in your audience. You should aim to evoke some type of emotion within them where they feel connected with you. And you should also be trying to have more conversation, have more feedback loops where you're able to develop some type of relationship with the viewer. And you'll be surprised because people tell me sometimes, they're like, wow, I didn't think you were going to respond. I'm like, what? Of course I'm going to respond. 
Of course I am. Y'all gotta remember, we're not just talking about followers, subscribers, like these are actual people. I'm a person, you're a person, you feel me? We're human, we have feelings, we have emotions, and most human beings want to feel like they are recognized. Most human beings want to be acknowledged and they want to feel important. And by engaging and responding to people, especially in a way that is emotive, it makes people feel special. All right, let's move on to the A. The A in the REACT acronym stands for all-encompassing. When your engagement is all-encompassing, you're not just sticking to one platform. You're not just commenting to people on Instagram or just on YouTube. You are using multiple platforms. So think about it, y'all. Are you posting daily on IG stories? Are you leveraging Facebook groups that are particular to your niche? Are you using Pinterest? Are you tweeting on Twitter? Are you using Reddit? Are you using TikTok? There are so many platforms you can use to navigate the social media space. So why not use them? I know it can be overwhelming sometimes, but you have to challenge yourself. Like right now, I'm trying to be a star on TikTok. I'll admit it. <laughs> I made my account in March and we're here in July and I'm just now jumping back on. And I have to thank my girl XOXO Sheba because she's done well on TikTok and she's been encouraging me to get back on the platform. I want to reach more people and I want to talk to more people and I want to bring them across different channels. And I know it's great for my engagement. So why not? Why not try to branch out? and try a different platform and see what happens. We always complain about not having the time and that's true to a certain extent, but come on, we have to make time for things that are important. And if you can just spend like maybe an extra 20 minutes of your day cross connecting amongst multiple platforms, I think it's worth it. So please stop telling me that you don't have time. Trust me, I've used the same excuse. That's why I was on TikTok for like three months. I've said it, you've said it, we've all said it. I don't wanna hear that shit anymore, <laughs> okay? Make the time. Moving on to the letter C. The letter C in the REACT acronym stands for creative. How creative can you be in your engagement? What do I mean by that? Let me explain. And I'm going to talk in particular about your call to action. Your call to action is what you use to inspire your audience to do something, maybe to buy something, to respond to you, maybe go to your blog or another platform. That is your call to action. And usually when people talk about call to action, they say like, make sure you put a call to action in your post. Like let's say you're posting on Instagram. It may look something like this. You see my call to action right here. I'm clearly asking a question and I want people to respond a certain way. That's all well and good. But the point of me creating this method, this system, is to challenge you to do more than what you would normally do. That is the point. So again, how can you be creative? I'm gonna use myself as an example. So for me, a great way to get creative with my call to action is by using Instagram stories. And I'm gonna give you a really good example of how I did this. So y'all know how Swiss Beats and Timbaland has the whole Versus series and they have different people battle, right? So this particular night, C and I, C is my girlfriend by the way, we were watching Nelly versus Ludacris and we were really hyped off of that, brought back so many memories. So at the end of it, we kind of had our own little jam session in the house and we ended up coming across a Britney Spears video, the Sometimes video. Oh. You just have to know, sometimes I run. Go Britney! So you know, we're jamming or whatever. So I decided to make a quick Instagram story and I made a poll where all I said was, where are my Britney fans at, right? People started responding to the poll. That is a call to action. Okay, so I was like, hmm, let me ask another question. So I put up the question, fave Britney song? And to drive the point home, I included the rest of the sometimes clip in the question. Simple enough, right? Well, this three word question garnered like a full day's worth of engagement in stories. Like I feel like my stories was so popping that particular day. And I'm gonna tell you why. I received a lot of answers from people. Like I received 30 answers from people. Normally if I post a question up, I might receive eight to 10 answers, maybe. But 30? Oh, it was on and popping. People were really hyped about Britney Spears. Now mind you, when people would respond to me, I wasn't just giving them the typical affirmative answer, just saying, oh yeah, girl, I love that song. No, I actually put in some extra effort. So if they said that they really loved the crazy video, I screen recorded their video, put it in my response to them, and I would say something about the video that I really liked. And I mean, who doesn't love crazy? I'm in too deep. <laughs> Yo, I can't get enough of 
that song. Like for real, I would love that song to the day I die. But yes, that's what I did. And I include the visuals because I know that evokes emotion and people were really into it. And I think what it was, the main reason why that story series did so well is because not only did it spark emotion, but it also played on nostalgia. And nostalgia is a very powerful tool. Now, mind you, at the time, I wasn't, I didn't have the React acronym in my head. This wasn't created yet. I literally just created this acronym like today. <laughs> know that I like connecting with people and I know what I like to see and I like to see visuals so I was like that's what I'm gonna put out there and so with me putting her different music videos up people are really feeling that and also the fact that I was including some fun facts about her that people may not have known people were feeling that and also just showing like behind the scene clips of Britney doing her thing behind the scenes of the music video for toxic and for lucky people are all over it and it wasn't just the answers that I received. People were responding to my DMs like crazy. This was all off of a simple call to action. Simple, yet highly creative and effective call to action. That yielded so much engagement. And I actually made a poll afterwards saying like, is this something that I should do regularly? And people responded in the affirmative. Like, they were like, yeah girl, you should do this again. And I actually thought of calling it Music Mondays, but I just never got around to it. So maybe I should challenge myself to like actually make it a thing because I saw how successful it was for me that day. This is how you have to assess things on your social media platform. If you see that something that works that people are into, you should keep doing it. And for me, it just took so much work to do it. I guess that's why I just didn't do it again. But I thoroughly enjoyed it because whether you like Britney Spears or not, she's a pop icon. A lot of my audience was anywhere from eight to 20, 25 years old when she was at her prime. Seeing her name evokes some type of emotion, whether it evokes adoration, whether it evokes annoyance, it might evoke some hate, it evokes something. And that is the goal that you want to have with your call to action. And I think if you are not on IG stories, if you're not utilizing it now, you need to get on it ASAP because it's a great way to engage and connect with your audience. I know it works really well for me and I definitely have personal DMs with people because of things that I post up in IG stories. It relates back to what I was saying about being responsive and how some people like to have this air of mystery to them, but I don't think that always works in your favor when it comes to having high quality engagement. I think people do like when you are approachable and relatable, and I think Instagram stories is a great way to showcase a little bit more of yourself as much as you're comfortable doing, and thus, sparking that engagement and building those connections with people. So for me, I'm gonna challenge some of you guys right now. I think all of you who are watching this video, I want you to craft a call of action this week, something that you're gonna post up in your Instagram stories. Actually, it can either be in Instagram stories or it can be your Instagram post feed. I want you to share something that you don't normally share with others. It doesn't have to be super emotional or emo, it doesn't have to make you cry, but I want you to push yourself a little bit because again, this is not just about followers and subscribers. We're talking about people and building relationships with people. People subscribe to people that they can relate to. I wanna hear some ideas of what your call to action is going to be this week. Drop some comments down below and let me know so I can hold you accountable and maybe y'all can hold me accountable for doing Music Mondays. If you guys like that idea, let me know down below. All right, so we've made it to the last letter in the acronym, T. T in the REACT acronym stands for timely. Ask yourself this, how quick are you to respond to a comment? How quick are you? Do you wait a minute, five minutes, three days? Think about that. One thing you should know is that on YouTube, the first 24 hours is a very important time for your video. The interactions that you receive on that video will tell YouTube whether it decides to push your content out further. What YouTube does, it'll push your content out to a select group of people. And if it sees that you're getting a substantial amount of interaction, it will then extend your video to other people, people that aren't even subscribed to you. That is how YouTube works. For Instagram, Instagram does something similar. I've heard that it pushes out your content to a small pool and within the first 30 minutes is when it's the most, most important because it tries to see who's commenting within that time. I'm not sure why the Instagram time frame is so short. I think it's just because Instagram is like a, a quicker, 
more immediate satisfaction type of platform. So things just go quickly on there. Your timeliness will definitely affect your level of engagement. You should definitely be carving out time after you post to respond to people. So for me, if I know I wanna post today on Instagram, let's say I am promoting a video and I wanna post a picture to promote that video, I'm gonna make sure I post at a time that works. For one, it works for when I know people are on the platform and that can be found in my analytics. But also it has to be a time that works for me where I can actually have time to respond to people as they're coming in. I do this a majority of the time. There are a few select times where I may post something and I don't have the ability to respond right away. But trust me, I'm not normally waiting like hours to respond to someone. Again, we're not trying to be elusive here. We are trying to be relatable, approachable, available to people because that is what fosters high engagement. I can't say it enough, y'all. Stop trying to be cool and act like you don't want to talk to people on a social media platform. The point is to be social. <laughs> Okay, I hope this is coming across clear as day for you all. I think this last T, the main thing you should get from this is that timeliness will trigger the algorithm to notice your content and it'll push it in your favor. So please be timely if you want higher engagement. So yes, y'all, these are my five attributes for high quality engagement on social media, in particular on YouTube and Instagram. What do you all think? Let me know. Now that you're familiar with the REACT acronym, I have a few questions for you. First question, is your engagement reactive? If not, what can you do differently? Second question, which attribute do you know that you are absolutely killing the game in? Like, let's say you know that you respond to all your comments, you're, you're killing that. Let's say you know that you write really thought-provoking captions on Instagram. That is like your forte. Or maybe you understand that IG Stories is an awesome tool for engagement and you always get a high amount of people watching your stories. Acknowledge that, take note of that. Let me know about it in the comments so we can discuss it because I would love to see how people are engaging with others on the platform. And if there is any areas that you need to work on, let me know that too. All in all, I created this acronym because I want to stress to people the importance of fostering relationships on social media. If you are actually trying to do this for real, whether you have a business of some sort, whether you do YouTube full-time, even if you just do it part-time and you just want to have a successful channel, part of that success, part of that growth that you see with people is them being reactive based on my acronym. Now here's the thing, part of being reactive is being proactive. So the example I gave about my IG stories, I didn't have to post that thing about Britney Spears. I could have just enjoyed that moment with me and my girlfriend and kept the pushing. But no, I was proactive because I said to myself, hmm, I think this is something that people that follow me would enjoy. I think this is something that they can relate to. And it's those small moments that you really feel like are nothing that can turn into everything. So I just want you to think about that as this video ends. This is going to be very long. I hope you guys have made it to the end of this. If you did, you're a G. If you're part of the premiere party, I love you so much for joining and watching. And if you're new here, what are you waiting for? Subscribe, hit that notification bell because I have way more great videos coming up for you. If you want to know the details on this lovely hair, it'll be linked in the description box down below. And of course, if you want to know how to start a YouTube channel, make sure you check out these videos right over here because trust me, I got you covered. I literally spilled out as much as I could <laughs> about how it was for me to start a YouTube channel. And hopefully this video is a nice way to tie things together. I thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.